You know, ladies and gentlemen, Americans, the average high IQ American is really dumb. They, they really, truly are the dumbest people in all of society. Now, they're crying and wailing about all of the drug deaths that are happening in the white community. But when you listen to them talk, who do they come after the most? Black people, black people, right? Black people, they sound like a broken record. Black people, they came and the population, they commit the crime. First of all, black people are not 13% of the population. You have been saying that for nearly a century. There is no way we have been sitting at the same number and we are growing in numbers every single year. Okay? Cut the crap. There is no way that's true. You know, what they're doing is playing psychological warfare on the black community. That's what they're doing. And if you don't have the ability to see beyond that, then you will get caught up in all of their trickeries. Now, what's another thing they love saying? Oh, Chicago, Chicago. There is a white community in Chicago. There is a Latino community in Chicago. There is an Asian community in Chicago. But they have said uh, Chicago so much in their daily lives and all through their media they think it's nothing but a black population there in Chicago. And black people are not the ones committing all of those shootings either. Okay. And then when you do have a legitimate argument, what do they do? Well, what about black on black crime? You know why they do that? Because they can't come at you with a legitimate argument on the point. So now they have to veer you off of the point and bring up something that has nothing to do with the conversation because they can't win. See, whenever they can't win a discussion or a, a back and forth with somebody black, then black on black crime is their uh, weapon, I guess, against us, which is a lame ass weapon, because if you go to the FBI table and look at the actual numbers, we ain't committing all these crimes that they're claiming. What they're saying does not match what the FBI table says. All right, it just is not adding up. But here's my next point. Most black men in America are not in jail for the most violent crimes. Okay, all you got to do is look at the FBI table. Most blacks that are in jail are in there for non-violent drug crimes. And most of those non-violent drug crimes is drug possession. That's what you're in there for. And then they give you these astronomical sentences through their legal system, which is should not even be viewed as legitimate. It's so damn racist, it shouldn't be viewed as legitimate. Okay. But here's the real kicker. There is a major drug epidemic in the white community that they hardly speak about in the media. It's not black people that's flooding their community and killing them with drugs. It's the Chinese. Right now, China is killing more white people in America than anyone else. They're killing more white Americans than anyone else on this planet. And they're doing it through the drugs.
Do you see them rounding up the Chinese? That is largely responsible for the drug epidemic going on in America because they're the ones shipping all this shit over here and selling it through the dark web and sending packages directly to people's doors from China. They are hugely responsible for what's going on here and taking them out by the thousands every single year. Ladies and gentlemen, the way China is flooding the U.S. with all of these synthetic opioids, it's amazing how they keep their reputation so clean. They're considered the model citizens, and at the same time, they're genociding the white race. It's brilliant. It's amazing how they want to keep muddying up black people through the media. But these Asians that are sending a tidal wave of drugs into America, there's hardly no mention of it, is it? If it wasn't for articles coming out online talking about all of the the waves and waves of drugs coming to the U.S. from China, you wouldn't even know anything about it. So I want to congratulate China and all of the Chinese for blinding the high IQ people because they sure don't see what you're doing. But the rest of us that are wide awake, we see it clearly. And it's brilliant. It's brilliant to genocide a people and they don't even see it coming or happening. What better way can China get themselves in the number one position in in this world than to get these cockazoids out the way. And they're doing a bang up job. Do you know one of the hardest addictions to break is an opioid and heroin addiction? This is why so many of them never get off of the drug because it's one of the hardest addictions to break. And if you notice the ones that go clean, their life expectancy is so short, many of them don't make it beyond their 50s and 60s after they've had this type of addiction earlier on in life. You'll see a lot of them, they'll go clean, and then 10 years later, they're gone. You know why? Because the damage is done in their bodies. But let's get back to this story that came out on ABC 7 Eyewitness News and how China is going under the radar and genociding a group of people with high IQs. The fentanyl crisis that is killing thousands of white Americans is not made in the USA. From the Midwest to South Beach and sea to shiny sea, the US is drowning in fentanyl made in China. Not made from black on black crime, but made in China. According to federal law enforcement officials on Tuesday, they announced that 21 people have been indicted, including two Chinese nationals in a major transnational fentanyl operation. The men and women are charged with making the synthetic opiate in China and selling it in the U.S. and Canada. 
drugs hawked in North America have been linked to several overdose deaths, authorities said. These cases reflect a new and disturbing facet of the opioid crisis in America, says Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. More and more of our citizens are being killed by fentanyl that comes from China. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen, they always want to talk about black crime. I'm willing to bet every dime in my wallet, a lot of these Chinese Americans that you're looking at are heavily involved in the trafficking of these drugs too. But like I said, it's amazing how they get to stay under the radar for everything that they're doing and their deep involvement in this drug epidemic. Brilliant. Brilliant Chinese people, brilliant. Okay. The alleged conspirators used numerous aliases to carry out their drug business, from Jackie Chan and Angry Bird to Phantom Pharma. One code name was Toxic Storm fitting for a powerful street drug that continues to poison and kill dozens of users a day. The I-Team reported last month that hundreds of fentanyl overdose deaths have occurred so far in 2017 in Metro Chicago and the fatalities continue unabated. Nearly all of the fentanyl sold here is made in China as a finished product or formulated elsewhere from base chemicals made in China, drug investigators say. And a lot of it is a base chemical that's sent into Mexico and then Mexico makes it from there and it comes into the United States. But you can best believe China is the biggest culprit of it all. One of them, at least. They, the Chinese, keep inventing them and we keep making them illegal. And we're going to continue to keep locking up. Listen to this. Everybody else we can who traffics in this, said Dennis Wichter special agent in charge of the Drug Enforcement Administration in Chicago. And they're right. The Chinese are flooding the market with these drugs and everybody else is getting arrested. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's brilliant. We have agents on the ground in China. We have opened up a second officer office, I'm sorry, earlier this year, just to work with the Chinese to stop the flow of these drugs into America and to Mexico, Wichern told the ABC 7i team. Two Chinese nationals facing federal charges announced Tuesday are identified as Zia Bling Yang and Jan Zhang, 38. The men are accused of operating illicit labs and chemical plants in China that produce fentanyl. They then sold their illicit products to users and more than 100 distributors in the U.S. and Canada over the Internet, typically paid and hard to trace bitcoins according to the indictments. Yan and Zhang are both in China, a nation that does not recognize extradition to the United States. I bet if they were a couple of black people, they would find a way around the law. 
but now they can't find a way around the law and bring these people to justice from China. <laughs> they came onto the federal radar in early 2015 when 18 year old Bailey Hank died of an overdose in uh, Grand Forks, North Dakota. The fentanyl in his system was found to have been supplied by Chinese traffickers. Hmm, interesting. But who's going to jail for non-violent drug possession in the U.S.? Black people. Who's flooding the U.S. market with drugs? The Chinese. Hmm. Interesting. You would think that since China has such a major hand in the drug plague that's going on, they would be the number one people going to jail for drugs. But they're not. It's black people. Black people. And a lot of that possession is marijuana. That's why Jeff Sessions keep talking about marijuana because they know that's the big thing that black people use. So a lot of our people are sitting in jail for marijuana, being caught with marijuana, and they get these astronomical sentences. But it's the Chinese that's flooding the deadly drugs and trafficking the deadly drugs in America. Hmm. Things are just not adding up here, huh? Hmm. Okay, let's get back into this article here. It is not known whether Chinese authorities have taken any enforcement actions against their citizens who are now facing U.S. charges or whether the chemical plants and the Internet sites in China have been sanctioned or closed. Well, if they're still appearing on the dark web, they're still there. We're seeking additional support from the Chinese government and cracking down on those labs. Do you know I was reading an article that the reason why many of those labs don't get caught in China is because they don't stay in one location for a long time. They keep switching locations. So it's hard for them to really catch up to them. If nothing else, it's brilliant. Okay, let's get back. If it were the other way around, tens of thousands of Chinese nationals were dying as a result of poison shipped from the United States, we'd be very proactive. So we're hoping to get the same kind of response from there. I say fat chance. I just don't see China giving up their people to the U.S. And if they did, you would have seen it by now. But then again, our media, they don't focus on Chinese people that are killing them by the hundreds of thousands every day. They focus on black people. Well, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes punishment comes from other Gentiles. And it's just amazing how the Chinese have pulled this off and they are still labeled as the model citizens of the U.S. Model citizen. <laughs> In the meantime, those model citizens and their country is killing your ass. But it couldn't happen to a more deserving group of people. I say, you've done a hell of a job, China. A hell of a job. The high IQ people just simply don't see it. 
please leave your comment and subscribe. And if you can donate to my channel, ladies and gentlemen, please do. Go China.